I'm Nick Harcourt, and we're going to welcome to the stage Clem and Chris and Debbie Blondie. Welcome, guys. So, Nick, do you have an agenda? Or? I, I've always got an agenda. Always got an agenda. No, I think we, we just met before, and I, I've met these guys before. We did an interview for Guitar Center Sessions a couple of years ago, and we, we had a good time, and we just hung out for a while and said, well, there's no real agenda here. But obviously, there's plenty to talk about. A little bit of history I think we should do, but 40 years. There's a big anniversary. I was I'm exhausted. Coming up. <laughs> I was hoping we could talk about True Detective and sort of forget about how, sure. I hate, about I, how cool the 70s were. I hate to say, but I, I haven't watched it. I don't, I don't I watch it. Who, who watches I, TV? I Talk, TV? Talking about TV, while I get this in now, uh, while, while I remember at the end of everything today, there is going to be uh, a little clip from a TV show that you guys are involved with called Blondie's New York, right? Do you know about that? No, I don't know. Okay, clue. that's going to be at the end anyway, <laughs> and, and I've done my bit. It's going to be on the Smithsonian Channel. There's yeah, a new channel so, every day. Oh, oh, yeah, March yeah. 21st. Why, why don't we go back, though, a little bit? Uh, we're going to have a Q&A part of this as well later on, but let's just get a, a, a little catch-up. And When you look at uh, the history of the band, when you look at the, the history of, of the music and think about where we're at today, we're at South by Southwest, which has become... Um, well, spring break, let's be honest. It's, it's become spring break, but it, we're at an event where music is celebrated. And if you look back 40 years when you guys started, what was going on in, in your scene when, when you guys started in New York? Not much. And 25 words or less. <laughs> well, it was a good music scene, and, and there were a lot of you know unknown bands playing. And... Um, <clears throat> Uh, I, we have to give credit to Hilly Crystal for, you know, promoting yeah. Yeah. Um, CBGBs. <clears throat> new music. Yeah, right. we, were, we were operating in a void. There wasn't much going on. Yeah, Hilly. Hilly Crystal, yeah. Yeah, we were kind of working in a void. You know, it was a very isolated uh, environment. It wasn't world-renowned as it is nowadays. And there weren't things like South by Southwest or many ways to promote yourself except... Uh, go out and play at the local bar, which our local bar was CBGB. Yeah. You know? but every, I think everybody by now, this all this subject has been beaten to death about the difference between now and then and the immediacy of everything. And, you know, there's just the, uh, for example, I am amused by how quickly I can find out what something I heard on the radio is. Whereas, you know, back then you would hear something and if you didn't hear what the DJ said, it could take weeks or months to find out what the hell years. it was. Years. Years. Yeah. Years. Well, what, was one what was thing inspiring you guys, though, at the time? What music was inspiring you? I mean, we, we can hear so much on demand right now, but in that period of time, you really have to search music out, right? Everybody, you know, talks about this blondie sound, which is kind of elusive to me. I'm not really sure what the hell it is, because I, we were just referencing all the stuff before us, you know? It's kind of, maybe I'm a little too close to it, but everybody, we have all different things that we grew up with, you know, folk, the Llewellyn Davis movie was really struck a chord in me. I loved that movie so much because I was a teenager in the middle of all that. He's an old folky, Chris. He's stuff. an old yeah. folky. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, when well, we first... I mean, he's, he plays with picks like a bluegrass yeah, player. Yeah, so finger pick. He really was influenced by that. Well, I think when we first met, we talked about the Ronettes, Biggie and the Stooges, uh, the Velvet Underground, uh, the Shangri-Las, and uh, that was kind of a common ground, and then we all went off on our own little tangents of what really inspired us individually. Chris, and Everybody uh, had a love of garage rock, you know, and right. you know, we all knew who like, the seeds were and all that stuff. 50s and 60s rock and roll, obviously. What, what about um, the, the time, the, the zeitgeist, culturally, what, what was going on in New York, though, and how you fit into that? I mean, obviously, there was, a, there was something new that was going on at that time. And uh, before there were hipsters, there was what was going on 40 years ago. Beatniks. Yeah. These yeah, guys are beatniks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I identify with the bohemian and beatnik movements more so than other, yeah. you know, genres. But um, what was going on? 
New York Dolls were really what was going was what was going on in New York. New York Dolls were like I think inspired everybody on the whole CBGB scene for sure, and they were like aside from the Velvet Underground, they were like one of the only New York bands that was a national band that had gotten signed, and that was underground at the same time was very influential to. Uh, most people, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, they had was the band the was, it was an ongoing. It was an ongoing rascals, music scene. Yeah. Went, went back to the, you know, the <clears throat> London Spoonful and the, yeah. the Rascals, yeah. and well, you know, there was there was always something going on, but it didn't quite, you know, solidify until the the punk era.